All right, last one. Third and final topic, uh, and this is actually a new topic for us. This is querying, um, something that we haven't done before. So, you know, basically we've been looking at how to create databases, how to put data into databases, but let's actually think about how we might actually query the database to get some data back out of it. And this is really where we start to be able to leverage all these primary and foreign keys and the structure of the database to do some really excellent and quick data manipulation. So if we think back to our sort of basic database that we built before, um, we can see now that uh, there's all this data in there and we might want to try to output, um, maybe we just want the sequence and, and, uh, and the, the database name field. So we only want this gmt1 underscore human and maybe the accession number, something like that, this GI number, and the sequence, right? But they're not in the same table, so how do we get all this uh, information back out at the same time, right? Because if you're thinking about any type of analysis or any type of data presentation, we want to be able to manipulate our data very quickly and very easily. Um, to do this sort of thing, we're going to use something called queries. And queries are based um, specifically by using uh, an order of expressions. Um, so we can filter rows using uh, a function called where. We can sort them using uh, according, uh, accordingly by using order by. And we can display uh, requested columns or expressions. So we can really filter through lots of different things. In addition, when we're doing queries, we can also uh, do what's called aggregation. And aggregation allows us to combine results um, by grouping records based on values and calculating combined values and groups. Um, specifically, we can count the number of samples we have, for instance, in a table called specimens. Or we might be able to count, uh, we could output a vehicle and count the number of times that uh, we have a, a specific count for that vehicle within the specimens uh, table. We can also do things like at average depth and other, other types of um, uh, calculations from this data. I'm also going to be talking about today, just to introduce the idea of queries though, about the usage of something called select. And select is the main way by which we query databases. Um, you probably all know the most general form, which is uh, the one that we've been using to see whether or not we've actually loaded data in or what's in our actual database. So how do we uh, get some output to make sure that we've done things correctly, we've been using this select wildcard from anot command, right? And that's gonna print out all the, all the data. So we're querying the database. We're saying, hey, look at the anot table and, tell, and select everything that's in there and send it back to us. Now in actuality, we usually don't want all the data from doing these types of things. So we can say, I want a specific field, the, the, descri the description field, I can say I only want the unique uh, examples from the name field from the DB database. So when I use distinct, that's only going to give me uh, unique names. Uh, I can filter the data too using where, like, or, reg, or uh, regepst. Um, and so that's a regular expression term. Uh, and so here I could say, hey, uh, I want to get the database and the description from the anot table but uh, only where the accession number is equal to a very specific uh, uh, value. Or I can say I want to get it, I want to get these, this database and description value from the ANOT table, but uh, only where the accession number starts with a P. And this is one of the ways that I can write that using the like uh, function. I can also use the regepsc uh, function and do the same thing, get the same values. In addition to that, I can use uh, greater than or less than or greater than and equal and less than, or less than and equal to also figure out um, a ways to report. So for instance, here I'll only get back the values for DB and description from the anod table where the GI foreign key is less than three. Um, and I can even use multiple conditions when I do these types of searches. So I can search where I might find a P or a C. Um, so let's look at our database that we used in the previous example and see if we can show some examples of this. 
as well as figure out this this question so we have our database um, it should already be built but let's uh, rerun it just to make sure I'm gonna double load uh, the data using the two values the set and the values example I did before just so that we have some redundancy in there for some uh, so we can show you how to use that distinct command so then if I go to each of these uh, tables I can I can run these commands, these select commands, and it'll show us precisely what is in these each of these tables. Right? So if I run it for anot, it shows me everything that's in these tables, right? And everything's been it's been loaded twice into that table. If I run it for prot, I can see that there's only one line with the sequence and the prot ID, the length. And if I run it for DB, I can see that it's only been put in there one time as well. And there are the names and the GI numbers. And again, in this case, I'm going to try to output the sequence for GMT and um, its database name. And I'm just going to go for, for this one uh, name in and of itself eventually. So if I start looking at uh, the different kinds of queries that are available to me, first, if I want to do the, some of the queries I showed you before, so if I just wanted to get all the de description values from the ANOT table, I can use this select descript from uh, anot and that will give me all the description of the values in the description fields if I just wanted to get um, unique values from the name uh, from the database names I could run this and it'll only give me the distinct uh, examples now this might not be a great uh, example so maybe instead of database if we use script and anod. Previously I had eight values right and now I've got four so it condenses down to just the unique values from that column. Additionally I can get multiple values from any any table so here I can get both the database and the description for any individuals that have an accession number equal to P09488. Um, I can also get any of the, you know, so I get all the same values when I look for any accession number that starts with a P. And I can use this, oops, I can use this uh, P percent sign to do that. I can also get the exact same thing from a search using this regaps, where now all these values, that's all these accession numbers, which starts with P, which is right here, right? I'm going to get the same values for DB and description output. So this is allowing me to pull out data quickly from um, my database and, and acquire the data that I might actually be interested in looking at. I can also use wildcards on either side of P, right? And here I'm actually going to pull out two different uh, items, um, or actually four items, but two uh, distinct items from my database and that's because if we look at the database there's actually um, an entry that has another P in its accession number. And again um, I can with uh, the regular expression search so I could just search for P and I'll get the same result. I don't need the wild cards. Again I can use um, I can use the uh, uh, inequalities to search for things like values for the foreign key of GI less than three and if I run that I'll just get two values which would be the first two things that were entered on their table because their foreign key is one and two um, and then I can use um, an or expression or an and expression to use search for multiple conditions and here I'm able to find things that start with P and things that start with C and so there's another it's a different entity that I would select then um, so lastly, if we look at how I would actually get the query that I brought up here, we see that that query is actually a much more complicated query because if we get as we get more complicated, what you can see is now I'm not only pulling one or two items from one table, I'm pulling one, one, two, three items from one, two, three tables. Now you notice I'm not pulling the anot table, but what I am doing is I'm going to use my foreign keys and my primary keys to get the just the values that I want. So because I have to reference <coughs> a foreign key, I have to include it in this list of tables. 
But once I do that, now I can access each of these fields just in the same way that we access things, uh, variables that belong to classes in Python. Um, here I'm accessing the name field, which belongs to the data to the DB uh, table object. I'm able to access the GI underscore num field, which belongs to the DB table object. I'm able to access the seek field, which belongs to the prot table object, etc., etc. And the condition that I set is one where I set the the foreign key on the anot table equal to the primary key that it's referenced to in the DB table. And then I say, and I only want to look at it where the DB name is equal to GMT underscore human. If I don't put this distinct here, uh, and so where these things are true, where these two conditions are true, I will output the DB name, the DB GI number, and the protein sequence. And because I've uh, connected these things, uh, I'm able to sort of output them all together. And if I run them, now you'll see I get um, the name, the number, and the sequence. Now, uh, if I wanted to make this distinct, I would say distinct. And then if I run this command, it'll look just like that. And I can get back just the information that I want. So that's a quick example of how to do queries. Um, please take a look at the little quiz that's going to be on the web.